Praise the Lord, saints and friends, and welcome back to another segment of Studying the Word. As always, I pray that you are well and enjoying the blessing of the Lord. And if you are living according to his word, it's working for your good. <clears throat> Let us pray. Father, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we love you, we appreciate you, we give you praise, we give you thanks. Again, for all that you have done for us, all that you are doing, and all that you will do in the life of the believer. And I pray now, Lord God, as we continue to study your word, that you open up our hearts, our minds, and our understanding, that we may receive your word and receive it with gladness. And having received it, that we act upon it and do all that you have commanded of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Get your Bibles, get your Bibles. Amen. We're doing our final session on what to do to overcome fear. And this is part three. Our theme verse is 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. And it declares, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and and of love and of a sound mind. Again, we are exploring the subject of fear and what we need to do to overcome it. We have already defined fear and examined some supportive scriptures to help us deal with fear. Fear, my friend, is a grave digger that has no sympathy nor respect of person. If you haven't already, you really should view part one and part two before jumping into this final segment. You need to see and understand how fear can wreck the lives of people. The consequences are terrifying. In this segment, we will continue to explore a few more scriptures that will help you to overcome fear. So let's start with Romans chapter 8. Very familiar passage. Uh, we'll look at verses 28, 31, and 35 through 39. However, please read verses 28 through 39 when you have a moment. Verse 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. So then, if we are assured and know that God is a partner with us in our labor and making it work for our good, then where is the need to fear? Where is the need to fear? If you love God and know that he is in partnership with with you, how can you justify being fearful, knowing that perfect love, perfect love does what? Cast out fear. That, my friend, is something to think about. So, after understanding our position with the Lord in verse 39 and verse 30, the Apostle Paul asks, a very important question in verse 31. And that question is, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? In other words, who can be our adversary? Who can be our antagonist, our enemy? If God is on our side. The psalmist declares in Psalm 118 and 6. Psalm 118 and 6. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Ah, what confidence. What assurance. What faith. I will not fear. Why? Because the Lord is on my side. Mm. My God. In Romans 
again, chapter 8, verse 35, Paul asks another very important question. And the things that he mentioned are things that bring fear into our lives. Let's read it. It says, who or what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Let's look at these individually because they can strike fear in a person. Now the word tribulation you see there is defined in the Greek as oppression, affliction, distress of being in dire straits. And, and, and these are things that can cause one to become frightened because of the unknown in their life. And generally, we are afraid of the outcome of things don't get any better. Because for some, the unknown is terrifying. Is terrifying. And so these things strike fear in the heart of man. And then there's the word distress. Uh, distress is dire calamity, extreme affliction. Persecution means to afflict constantly so as to injure or cause distress. Mm. These things, my friend, friend, bring terror into our lives and put us on the run, looking for answers in all the wrong places. My God, fear, again, is a terrible thing. I tell you, it's dangerous. And then there's famine or, or hunger. Now, you're taking couple, couple that with nakedness, or destitution, and you have a real winner for fear. People are afraid of the unknown, as I've said. However, the child of God should not be afraid because of all the reason I've already shared with you by way of the scriptures. And famine or nakedness Hunger or destitution should not cause us to fear because the word teaches us that the Lord daily loadeth us with benefits so that we will not go like it. Hmm. My God, just a thought. Uh, and then we see the word peril or danger. And these things keeps us locked in. Peril, danger keeps us locked in and throw the word sword in the mix which is a large knife that is used for killing and you have a real recipe for uncontrollable fear unchecked and unbridled fear danger puts us on the edge of our sensibility oh yes <laughs> It can cause us to react very unseemly and for some to the point of actually snapping, completely losing it. But the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul understood the true position of the saints of God. He says in verse 36, else it is written, but thou say we are killed all the day long. Now this is already written. So we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. In other words, after he quotes Psalm 44 and 22, he makes it clear that we are regarded and accounted as sheep for the slaughter. So this is knowledge. This is good information because in knowing this, we should take our position and stand firmly in the absence 
of fear. <laughs> my God, my God. Not only that, but verses 37 through 39 explain why. Verses 37 through 39 explain why. Let's take a look. Verse 37 says that nay, in all these things, all those things that we talked about in verse 35, we are more than conquerors, my God, through him that loved us. Now the phrase more than conquerors means to gain a surpassing or decisive victory. A surpassing or decisive victory. In other words, my friend, we are the undisputed winners. We are the undisputed champ. And if you notice already, if you notice already, again, what's the reason for fear? You are already a declared winner. More than conquer. You have gained a decisive victory. My God, my God. Just to know this should dispel fear. Paul goes on to say in verses 38 and verse 39, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus our Lord. So let's face the facts, my friend. Many of us are afraid of death. We don't understand it, and nor do we want a part of it. Even life itself. Some folks are afraid of living. And so they isolate themselves into a state of full paranoia. Mm, mm, mm. My God, my God. Principalities, the word principalities in this passage means beginning or origin. It deals with rulers and magistrates, mainly of angels and demons. If some of us are afraid of what we see, how about those things we can't see? And the word powers here, the word powers here means anything exerting power or influences. Listen, my friend, it doesn't matter what the origin is. It doesn't matter what the origin is. Once my mind is made up, Nothing in this world or the next world will separate me from the love of Christ. And so I ask you, is your mind made up? Fear is a spirit of the devil. And he uses it. Listen to me. He uses it to damage, to separate, and to destroy our relationship with God. However, God, on the other hand, tells us not to fear. Now, that's not good advice. That's a command. He's instructed us not to fear. We find in Psalm, we find in Psalm 31, verse 24, Psalm 31, verse 24, these words. It said, be of good courage as opposed to poor courage, <laughs> or weak courage, or unsure courage. He said, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. All ye that hope in the Lord, all you that hope in the Lord, he will strengthen your heart. All you simply have to do is to be of good cheer. Again, be strong. And God shall cause you to be brave, to be stout, to be bold, to be solid, and to be hard. These are very meaningful words, my friend. And I know at times 
We act like scary cats. But pull it together, saints. Pull it together. Be the brave warrior God has called you to be. The world itself is troubling enough. Every time I bring up my news or read the news, there's always bad stuff, mayhem, craziness, destruction, killing at every level, every degree. My God, that's troubling enough all by itself. That keeps us praying. But yet we have what it takes to be fearless, to be fearless. Let's examine John chapter 14, verse 2. 27, John chapter 14, verse 27, and we find Jesus talking here. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not else the world give it. Mm -mm. Give I unto you. So he said, therefore, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be free. <laughs> listen, listen. Peace is the state of tranquility. It's security, safety, prosperity, felicity. Why? Because peace and harmony, peace and harmony make and keep things safe and prosperous. Isn't that good news? Yes, it is. We can't have peace until we have the true peace giver. And that, my friend, is the prince of peace. My God. Mm, you have Christ, you know peace. No Christ, no peace. <laughs> my God, my God. Let not your heart be troubled. The word trouble means to agitate, to agitate. It means to trouble by the movements of its parts to and fro, to and fro, creating friction. It's agitating. It means to cause one inward commotion to take away one's calmness of mind and to disturb his peace. I addressed this in medical terms in part one. There is no doubt that trouble creates fear. It creates fear. I mean, it absolutely disturbs you, and it disturbs your body. It disturbs your inner working. It disturbs your mental faculties. And we need to get a grip on it. Because Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. My God, my God. Listen, the word afraid means to be timid. In other words, stop allowing ourselves to be agitated and disturbed. And do not permit ourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. Instead, I submit to you to be the opposite according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, which says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Fear, my friend, will not allow you to do so. It won't allow you to abound. It won't allow you to be steadfast and unmovable. So you see the importance of being able to shake this thing. We need that perfect, complete, and mature love that cast out fear. My God, my God, we got to be able to recall the word and stand on the word and live the word. Let's examine a couple of more passages and we'll wrap it up. Is that okay? Let's look at Psalm 27, verse 1, and then verses 3 and 4. 
verse 1, verses 3 and 4. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? My God, my God. I believe the summers here understood who his God is and what his God means to him. The word salvation means deliverance, victory, rescue, safety, welfare, my God. I don't see or read fear anywhere in that declaration at all. I don't see it. I don't feel it. I don't sense it. Not fear. And then strength. The word strength is a place or means of safety, of protection, of refuge, and stronghold. I don't know about you, but I see a picture of complete protection. My God, my God. So I have no reason to fear. Verse 3 testifies that though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. My God, my God. The word encamp, before we move forward, the word encamp means to lay siege against. It doesn't matter, my friend, the size of the enemy or the frequency of war. I'm confident that the Lord is the strength of my life. And I will not be afraid. I will not be turned from my deliberate purpose in serving him. In fact, and according to verse 4, the psalmist goes on to declare, One thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire into his temple. Mm. I will dwell, I will remain, I will sit, and I will abide in his house. And there, my friend, I will inquire, seek to search, to consider, to look for, and to reflect on his word and all that he has done for me. All that he has done for me. Good God Almighty. Mm. And finally, finally, in Hebrews 13 and 6, Hebrews 13 and 6, puts the icing on the cake. And it says, so that we may boldly say, not fearfully say, not cowardly say, not timidly say, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is our helper. And I will not fear, I will not fear, what man shall do unto me. My friends, with confidence, I say again, with confidence, we can boldly say that the Lord is our helper. We will not be apprehended with alarm. My God. We will not be apprehended with fright. Mm, mm, mm. We will not be bound in fear. We will not fear or dread or be terrified or be made to flee or run. Why? Because the Lord is our help. And there, my friend, you have it. Father, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Again, Lord God, we appreciate you we thank you, Lord God, for life, health, and strength. We thank you for the courage, the boldness that you have given unto us. We give you praise for not having the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I pray that this teaching 
has helped someone and will be a help to someone. I thank you for those who have taken the time to view this broadcast, to study with me, and to learn the word, O oh Lord God. Build them up. Strengthen them, O oh Lord God. Strengthen me, even if I continue, even as I continue to teach your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. By now, my friend, you should be feeling invincible, fearless, and ready to take on anything. And if nothing else, I pray that this teaching has been a blessing to you. So don't forget to like and to share with others, depending on what platform you're on, Facebook, or YouTube. Uh, share with others what you have learned uh, in this teaching and this lesson on what to do to overcome fear. And thanks again for tuning in. And I'll return next week with more exciting teachings from the Word of God. Be blessed, my friend. And know that I love you and God loves you.